In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, the universe in a verse. He spoke space and time into existence, placed the planets and stars, made the earth and all that's in it, made mountains, carved canyons, set the seas in their boundaries, produced plants and created every creature. And he saw that it was good, but it wasn't finished. God made man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female, he created them. And God saw that it was very good. His perfect, sinless creation was finished. But the serpent was more crafty than all of God's creatures. Satan, the devil, the dragon, the deceiver and accuser of men. Did God really say, he asked Eve, that you must not eat from any tree in the garden? With a question, she questioned all that God was and is and had done. She doubted his divine goodness and she ate and she gave and he ate and he shared in her shame. Together, man and woman exchanged the eternal glory of God in favor of the fleeting flavor of fruit. They treasonously traded his truth for lies. They knowingly chose not to know him who knew them from the beginning, the one who breathed and gave them breath, the one who designed them from dust, the one they used to know face to face, the one they used to trust. Now they only knew disgrace. Now they will return to dust. Death had come for they rejected the giver of life for a chance to be his equal. Instead of equality, they had a new quality, shame. So they hid, naked on the outside, afraid within, waiting to die, the cost of sin. But God still came to them like he always did, walking through the garden in the cool of the day just to be with them. But the man and his wife, they trembled and hid from him, so God called to them. They came and he talked with them, Adam blamed and Eve blamed and God punished them, man, woman, and serpent like he promised them. But God also clothed Adam and Eve with an animal skin, supplying a sufficient sacrifice to cover their nakedness and their shame, foretelling that one day another man, a better man, born of a woman but not of a man would come and that he would crush the head of that snake and that sin and everything in its wake, that man would finish. But for now, God banished them from the tree of life, from the perfect paradise, because their innocence, our innocence, was now inexistent. Never again would there or could there be another perfect son of Adam. Our hope for a life without sin, just three chapters in, was finished. But God made a promise. He called Abram from his homeland to a new land a land flowing with milk and honey, a land of promise, a promised land. And God promised this man, I will make you into a great nation and through you, all peoples of the earth will be blessed. But Abram was old and had no son, but soon he would have one. Isaac was born, his name means laughter. And soon thereafter, God tested Abraham. Would he give his only begotten son, the one through whom all peoples on earth would be blessed? Would he sacrifice him and lay him to rest with his death? Would God's promise be finished? No, the glory of this story would not be diminished, but increased. As Abraham's blade fell, he suddenly ceased as God called out Abraham and provided a sacrificial ram. The son was spared and with him the promise not finished. Isaac begat Jacob, the wrestler who wrestled with men his entire life, struggling with his uncle 14 years for a wife. But once in a night, he met his match in a match in the river. Jacob fought and he struggled with all his strength until the sun rose and the opponent who opposed his pride suddenly chose to break his hip with a touch. But it wasn't so much a new limp that would define his story, but a new name, no longer the man wrestler, but the God wrestler, Israel, Israel. A new name, but the story's the same and it's not finished. Fast forward 400 years, Israel has been exceedingly fruitful and increasing in number from young to old, but enslaved to a nation of gods and gold. Moses, the boy from the water, a fugitive shepherd who came face to face with a fire in the desert named I Am, called to go home to Pharaoh and proclaim that the name of God would now be exalted above all the gods of Egypt and that his people, Israel, would now be a free nation. 10 plagues later, and the people were free, redeemed through the sea to a mountain. And in that place, they found found a fountain of water and word. The law of God first given and heard, 10 commandments sovereignly spoken, but even before they were read, they were broken. You see, this nation, these people were corrupt and sinful. This nation, these people, 
They entered Canaan with hearts that were hard and necks that were stiff. And just as if God himself were not enough to bring their heart's desires, they asked for a king. God's reign on the throne of the hearts of his people was finished. This nation, these people, they got Saul, then David, a man who loved God, but whose secret sins would prophetically prove to undo this one nation and break it in two. A ruined king, a divided kingdom, and yet the story's not finished. Lest we forget the promises made to Adam and Abraham, even now another one, a new king would come through a son of David. No, it was not finished. But this nation, these people, a thousand more years and 40 more kings, each one more wicked than the last. God's prophets pronounced punishment that was coming on fast. This nation, these people loved false gods and gold and self and sword. And again and again and again and again and again, they did evil in the eyes of the Lord. This nation, these people taken captive, finally, decisively by the hand, the hand that gave them the promised land now raised up foreign kings and kingdoms to bring them to Assyria and Babylon and Persia. Though a remnant would return to rebuild and relearn the broken walls and lost ways, this much was clear that this nation, these people had forgotten that knowledge begins here at the fear of God. But is this so odd? You see, the thing about this nation and these people that I want to discuss is that these people, Israel, they were people like us. They were unwise, unrighteous, unkind, and unjust, just like us. It may as well have been me that failed to trust my God in the wilderness and the promised land. It may as well have been you with your idols in hand. We're angry and we're greedy. We've all lusted and lied and ignored the needy because of our pride. This is sin at its root. We're even with Eve in Eden, for we've all eaten that fruit. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. This is our story. This is their story. It's the story, but it's not finished. This is why he came. The one who was promised from the beginning when paradise perished, when man began sinning, the new Adam, the better Adam who came to crush the head of the serpent and with it our shame. The one who was promised to Abraham, a firstborn son, but this time a ram would not take his place. No, he is the lamb who would die to replace our sin with his righteousness. What kind of grace would it take to take the punishment of an entire race of rebels who in their rebellion had spat in his face? Face. This is our Savior, our King, that God had promised to bring. But instead of a crown, he wore thorns on his head. And instead of a throne, a cross. And he bled and he suffered. No, this was not the work of a betrayer's kiss. Eternity and 33 years led to this. Knowing all had been done, every word had been spoken, every miracle worked, every yoke broken, every promise fulfilled, the law kept to perfection, every prophecy done, except one. I am thirsty, he said, and he drank, and he breathed his last breath. The author of life surrendered to death on a cross. But lest we think his death was a loss, he reminds us that this was always the cost. Jesus died and was buried, but he was not beaten. His blood paid the price for every fruit that we've eaten. This was the plan, even from Eden, the purpose of God from the start. And so, with the last beat of his dying heart, he said, it is finished. The cross, the crossroads of justice and mercy, God's perfect purpose providentially prepared and prophetically proclaimed. From the beginning, the Son of God, the spotless Lamb slain, this was always the way, plan A accomplished all for God's glory. Jesus' death was the end of the chapter, but not the story. <laughs>